Okay everyone, welcome to my lecture channel. So what I'm going to do in this video is quickly go through the chapter 13 monopolistic competition outline. It's very similar to how I would do it as if we were doing an in-person lecture and I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I possibly can. So remember last chapter we talked about perfect competition. So when we were talking about perfect competition, we talked about the characteristics of that market structure, which were many firms, identical products, and then no barriers to entry and exit. Those first two characteristics, they implied our horizontal demand curve, remember? So we had a horizontal demand curve when we were looking at our graph, and then we also, we had our marginal cost curve, and then two other cost curves, which are average total cost and average variable cost. But on top of our horizontal demand curve, we also had two other things. Remember, for perfect competition, we had a horizontal demand curve, but also on top of that demand curve, we had our price, demand equals price, and then we also had our marginal revenue curve. So the horizontal demand curve is very unique to perfect competition. But in this chapter, we're going to actually be talking about monopolistic competition. So what's special about monopolistic competition, we'll see later on, is the fact that it actually has a downward sloping demand curve similar to what we'd be used to graphing back in chapter three. So when we're thinking about a monopolistically competitive market, we have three characteristics we want to talk about. One being many firms. So just like perfect competition, we have many firms in this market structure. The special thing about monopolistic competition is the differentiated products. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. And then Third thing, just like perfect competition, we have low barriers to entry and exit. Okay, so we want to think about monopolistically competitive firms. We can think about restaurants, which will be our main example for this, like nail salons, clothing coffee shops, etc. Okay. So, when we think about monopolistically competitive, the key thing we want to remember is the fact that they have differentiated products. So, these are going to be a little bit different in some way, shape, or form. This, um, we'll talk about how we can differentiate our products through like marketing just a little bit later. Um, and so we'll have cons different consumer preferences related to each firm that's within this, that operates within this market structure. So the example we're going to be kind of talking about is, you know, fast casual, the fast, fast casual restaurant market. So those include restaurants such as Chipotle, Panera, Shake Shack, stuff like that. But when we think about these types of, um, restaurants, you know, the consumers will actually tend to prefer one type of sandwich over another type of sandwich. So in this case, we're going to talk about Panera. So if you prefer Panera over um, Chipotle or another type of fast casual restaurant, um, what will happen is if Panera, um, you know, raises its price, some but not all of its customers are going to be switching from buy from Panera to start buying their sandwiches elsewhere. And so if they raise their price, some but not all of the customers will switch to buying their products elsewhere. And so let me just write that out really quick. So the idea of differentiated products leads to some but not all of its customers switching to buying sandwiches elsewhere and so that will actually lead to Panera 
facing a downward sloping demand curve. Okay. And it will also face a marginal revenue curve below its demand curve. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. We'll proof it out with a little um, table below its demand curve. So what that will look like when we look at it on a graph, something like this. So we're going to have a downward sloping demand curve and then we'll have a marginal revenue cu curve that it's steeper than the demand curve and below the demand curve. And really kind of talking about the theory behind why um, we have a downward sloping demand curve is because essentially as the price um, Let's think about the opposite. As the price decreases for a sandwich, Panera may sell more sandwiches overall. So revenue may increase due to the extra sale. However, revenue also may decrease because of the reduced price on all sandwiches overall. So over time, this price effect or the decrease in revenue is going to become larger. Therefore, we're going to have um, this downward sloping demand curve and a marginal revenue curve below the demand curve. So for an MC firm, they actually have the ability to affect price of product it sells. So MR is below demand. Okay. So now let's look at kind of the numbers behind this. So if I were to actually look at this table, which kind of talks of, that shows the quantity of sandwiches, the price of sandwiches, and also total revenue. So we've calculated total revenue revenue by taking the price times the quantity and then we can also look at marginal revenue. So the key things we want to think about here are demand and marginal revenue. So we can find our demand curve which is shown right here um, below the table. We can find the demand curve by just graphing out the quantity of sandwiches and the price. So we did quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. So we had 0 and 10, 1 and 9.5, 2 and 9, 3 and 8.5, 4 and 8, 5 and 7.5, et cetera, et cetera, you get the point. And then we also are able to calculate our revenue and then look at what our marginal revenue is going to look like. So this is where I would ask y'all again, um, you know, what does the word marginal mean? Marginal means extra. So how would we find the marginal revenue? All we would need to do is subtract the difference between our total revenue for each additional sandwich that we would be consuming. So for the first one, we wouldn't have any, but for the second one, the um, difference between 9.5 and 0 is 9.5, so $9.50. 18 and 9.5 would be 850, 7.50, 6.50, 5.50, and then 4.50. So when we're looking at that, let's go ahead and just graph our marginal revenue. Again, so with one sandwich, our marginal revenue is now we're going to graph it in red. Marginal revenue is 9.5. Okay. Um, for the second, it's 8.5. Seven point five for three. Something like that. 6.5 for 4. 5.5 5 for 5. This is not drawn to scale. And then 4.5 for 6. So we can see that 
marginal revenue is going to be less than our demand curve. Okay. So now that we've kind of gone over, you know, what our demand curve looks like and why it looks like that for a monopolistically competitive or MC firm. Now let's talk about how does a monopolistically competitive firm maximize profit in the short run. So keep in mind that firms aren't just trying to maximize revenue. They want to maximize profit in the short run. So I might have said revenue earlier, but we want to think about how they're maximizing profit in the short run. So um, again, to maximize profit, you have to think about marginal cost. So marginal cost is that additional extra cost. And so we want to think about what the profit maximizing quantity again was for both the PC firm and compare it to what the MC firm is going to be. So Profit maximizing requires producing until the marginal revenue from that last unit is just equal to the marginal cost. So remember overall, I told y'all you need to remember this, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So really, really important. But for a PC firm, let's think about um, how for a PC firm, what is equal to marginal revenue? We have price also equal to marginal revenue. So in order to fulfill the profit maximizing condition, we can say we're going to produce where P is equal to MC. Since price is equal to marginal revenue and we want to find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, price is also going to be equal to marginal cost. However, for an MC firm, we're going to think about that price is going to be greater than marginal revenue. Because if we look at the demand curve, our price is going to be higher than marginal revenue. So, produce where price is greater than marginal cost. Okay. So again, as far as profit maximizing level of output, it's the exact same as what we talked about in a perfect competition firm. It's where MR equals MC. As far as profits in the long run, um, just like... Um, the PC firm in the short run, they might make a profit or a loss, but in the long run, the firm must break even. So remember how I showed y'all with the PC, how um, the entry and exit, ease of entry and exit of the firms enable um, the firm to break even in the long run. So now let's compare the graphs for a PC firm at profit, loss, and break-even versus the MC firm. So we're just going to look at the two types side by side. Um, here you can see I've just went ahead and drawn out what short-run profit looks like, um, what economic loss looks like, and what break-even looks like. So we're going to just go through each one quickly, um, the steps as far as like determining whether it's profit, loss, or break-even. So the first thing we need to do is determine where the profit maximizing quantity is. So remember, Profit maximizing quantity, that is where MR equals MC. So that's one of the most important things you got to first identify is where does MR equals MC. So let's look at this um, PC short run profit first. So MR equals MC, remember demand curve equals MR equals price for a perfectly competitive firm. So therefore MR equals MC at the point in which they intersect. But remember we need to drop straight down to determine what the profit maximizing quantity is. So the profit maximizing quantity is at MR equals MC. And remember, we want to stay on the sidewalk. The sidewalk is what tells us what, um, what the price is, what our average total cost is, and if the average variable cost curve is on here, what the average variable cost is. So we can see here that price is clearly above our average total cost. So price, average total cost. Okay, for MC short run profit, we're again looking at 
um, a graph with marginal cost, average total cost, but here we have two separate demand and marginal revenue curves. So again, first things first, where's the profit maximizing quantity? Where MR equals MC. So MR equals MC at this point right here. So this is profit maximizing quantity. However, this point does not tell us the price. The, in order to determine the price, we need to go up to where the demand curve is. So we need to go straight up to the demand curve and again stay on the sidewalk and then over straight over will determine the price okay so now we're able to also determine the cost at that profit maximizing quantity which is again staying on the sidewalk locating where that is related to the average total cost curve and then going over to determine our cost. So I'm just going to use C for cost. So we have price and then we have cost. So here's our price here and then our cost would be drawn over like this. So here we had our price is greater than our average total cost, and here again we have our price is greater than our average total cost. Okay, so now let's look at economic loss. So remember for an economic loss, our price is going to be less than our average total cost. So again, what's the profit maximizing quantity where MR equals MC? So MR equals MC at this point right here so that's our profit maximizing quantity go straight up and then we can also determine what our cost is so here cost is greater than price or price is less than cost and again we're going to stay on the sidewalk okay sorry over here for MC, again, identify the profit maximizing quantity where MR equals MC. MR equals MC at that point right there. So there's our quantity. Go straight up. Remember, we're going to use the demand curve to determine our price. Because remember, we have a downward sloping demand curve instead of a horizontal demand curve. So we have price here. And then we have our cost over here. So again, price is less than average total cost. So we have an economic loss. Stay on the sidewalk. Okay. Finally, we have our break even point. So our break even point is where price is actually equal to average total cost. Price is equal to average total cost. So MR equals MC is at this point right here, and that's also tangent to average total cost. So there's our profit maximizing quantity. You. And our price and our average total cost are equal. Okay. For MC break even, again, profit maximizing quantities where MR equals MC. Go straight up, stay on the sidewalk. And our demand curve tells us what the price is. And then also at that point right there, our average total cost curve is tangent to our demand curve. So we have prices equal to average total cost. So the last two things I really want to quickly talk about are how marketing differentiates products and then what makes a firm successful. So when it comes to monopolistically competitive firms, differentiation is really important. So we're going to briefly define marketing. Obviously, this is not a marketing class, um, but we want to think about it in terms of economics. So marketing includes all activities necessary for a firm to sell 
a product to a customer and then obviously you know once your product is differentiated you want to maintain that over time and that can be done through brand, what's called brand management which are the actions of a firm intended to maintain differentiation of a product over time. Okay. And then the last thing that we can kind of talk about for specifically monopolistically competitive firms, like kind of what makes a firm successful, there's two really main points. Um, they are, you know, the differentiation of a product and then production at a lower average cost than competition. So overall, kind of, you know, the key takeaways that I want y'all to remember from uh, this chapter would just be um, really going back to the idea of, you know, we need to have differentiated products in for a monopolistically competitive firm versus our perfect com competition firm that had homogeneous or similar products. And then also we want to think about how the differentiation enables a firm to affect the price of the product, which leads to a downward sloping demand curve. So, and then finally, we are still using the idea of MR equals MC as our profit maximizing level of output. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have questions, please email me um, and hopefully I'll be able to clarify um, and then expand on any questions you have. Thanks.